When and how did man come to worship God on the first day of the week? Of course, God is worthy to be praised every day. But I'm talking about doing away with the Sabbath day in an effort to make Sunday, which is the first day of the week, holy. The dictionaries make an erroneous claim that Saturday or the Sabbath day is for the Jews. But Sunday, the first day of the week, is for the Christians. Can this statement be substantiated with biblical text? As we've seen in our previous videos, the Bible describes the seventh day as God's Sabbath. So who gave man the authority to redefine what God had already defined? Remember the Bible verses that we've read in our previous episodes. Those like Malachi, the third chapter, verse six, which said, for I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Or even Psalms 89th chapter, verse 34, it says, my covenants will I not break nor alter the thing that has gone out of my lips. God does not change. So when he defined the Sabbath day as the seventh day of the week, that term is fixed. God is both holy and righteous. And one thing that I know about him is that he is mistake free. So why did man abandon the seventh day for the first day of the week? If you were to ask this question to anybody, one of the first response that you probably will receive is that we keep Sunday because on the first day of the week, Christ rose from the dead. Now there are many Bible verses that verify that Christ indeed rose on the first day of the week. Does that justify a sudden transfer of the Sabbath day to the first day of the week? This is an act, a custom, if you will, that Christ practiced throughout his time and days on earth, according to Luke, the fourth chapter, verse 16. Now, if we look at Acts, the 20th chapter, verse seven, it says, and upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. This is a, another Bible verse that individuals, pastors, and many religious organizations will attempt to use, suggesting that the first day of the week is now the new Sabbath. But where in the verse does it suggest that this was a religious service? The Bible said that Paul was eating food with the disciples and he preached or he's teaching them. He was not preaching to the entire masses, but this was personal time that he and his disciples shared together to bond, to eat, and even the fellowship after traveling. What other reasons do we know that Paul was not abandoning the Sabbath day with his disciples for the first day of the week? Just like Christ, Acts the 17th chapter, verse 2 said, And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures. Now, the word manner here means custom. It was Paul's custom to keep the Sabbath day. As a matter of fact, in the city of Corinth, for a year and a half, Acts the 18th chapter, verses 4 through 11, said that Paul taught in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. This is approximately 78 straight weeks that Paul taught. The Greeks were the Gentiles. There was not a separate Sunday service for them. Remember what I said on some of our previous videos, the Greeks or the Gentiles, they learned about the one true God by way of the Jews. And this is confirmation. They learned about him and they were taught on the Sabbath day about Christ. Christ, the disciples, and even Paul kept the custom of going to the synagogue on the seventh day of the week to worship or to teach. Now, in Mark, the sixth chapter, verse one and two, it said, and he went out from thence. Now, this was Christ and came into his own country and his disciples follow him. So Christ is not by himself. His disciples are with him. Now, Paul was not with them, but 
we are showing a pattern here. Verse 2 says, as when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. Let's look at another Sunday scripture. In 1 Corinthians 16th chapter, verse 2, it says, Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God hath prospered him, that there be no gathering when I come. Some people use this Bible verse to suggest that Paul was collecting tithes on the first day of the week. Because certain business manner is not permitted on the Sabbath day, other business matters, including travel, was done on other days other than the Sabbath. Paul was traveling to different countries, and he was not about to sit around and wait for the people to get their affairs together. Paul wants the people to be prepared when it was time to collect. Once again, Acts the 13th chapter, verse 9, tells us that Paul was a righteous man because he was filled with the Holy Spirit. Verse 42 said, When the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them. When? Was it the first day of the week? Absolutely not. The next Sabbath. Verse 44 stated, And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. Whether they were Jew or Gentile, the whole city came together to hear Paul on the seventh day Sabbath. Again, there was no different services for the Gentiles. The phrase first day of the week, it's used only eight times in the Bible, five of which is speaking about the resurrection of Christ. The other three, well, we just talked about the word Sabbath is used 115 times. However, believers have let the system, the religious system, convince them that they should substitute the Sabbath day for the first day of the week. Now, while the majority of the Christian world has blindly accepted Sunday, the first day of the week, as God's new Sabbath, or have just abandoned the Sabbath day altogether, Documented history verifies that the Bible has already, what the Bible has already concluded, and that is that the seventh day from the going down of the sun on Friday to the going down of the sun on Saturday is indeed the Sabbath that belongs to God. Some people may say, so what? Minister Al, what's the big hoopla about? Well, the book of Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 2, it told us that it is a sin. It is against the law of God to add to his word or diminish out from it. Revelations, the 22nd chapter, verse 18 through 19, said it this way. It said, for I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book, of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. The book of Psalms, the 145th division, verse 17, explain to us that God is righteous in all his ways and he's holy in all his works. In other words, he is mistake free. He says what he means, and he means what he says, and he will not change or alter the things that he has spoken, according to Psalms 89, 34. Because he has already defined his Sabbath as the seventh day of the week, man is out of order to change it or even to say that is done away with. It is your religion who is teaching for doctrine the commandments of men that started all this mess. But let's look at how history confirms Daniel 9 25 which said it was the enemy's plan to change times and laws. On our next episode we're going to just do, do just that. We're going to show hardcore historical information that unequivocally shows 
that man had a hand in changing this holy and sacred day that was instituted as a perpetual covenant by God. To learn more about the Sabbath day, log on to www.tvbaythel.net. On behalf of Bethel Temple and College, I'm Minister Al. See you next time.